Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not going to see here on YouTube. So whenever I share my skincare routine or I react to somebody else's skincare routine, I seem to get a lot of questions and feedback about the cleansing stage of the routine. This is kind of what I would consider the easiest part of the routine, I guess. Like, the, the bit I feel is the most straightforward, but I get that it's quite confusing when there's a lot of people saying you should use pH balance cleansers, you shouldn't use makeup wipes, you should use micellar water, you shouldn't use micellar water. Oil cleanse for a minute. You know, there's so many different ways to cleanse and so much advice out there on how to cleanse. What I thought I'd do today is share my cleansing routine. That's morning and night, that's winter, summer, autumn. The other one, spring, and just share with you how I cleanse in the morning and in the evening, how it's different. The products I use, the products I don't use, the products I use in the evening that I wouldn't use in the morning. And this will just be based on my personal cleansing routine. We won't be talking about how to pick a cleanser that's best for you, best for your skin type, anything like that in this video. We'll save that for another day. So let's get straight into it. Let's start with the morning cleanse what I do, what I don't do, what I refuse to use, and what you shouldn't use in the morning. Good morning, so I'm in front of my vanity, so sorry about the uneven lighting, but I'm gonna start doing my morning cleanse. So the first thing I do is get my hair out of the way. One thing, um, I use these little Velcro patch things. The reason I like to get my hair out of my face is because I use a lot of hair product, and the last thing I want is that hair product going onto my skin. A lot of the products I use are waxy and oily, um, and I would find that when I, I used to have a fringe, I get a lot of breakouts on my forehead, so I don't want any of that product going onto my skin. There's an actual name for it, but I forgot what it is. So in fact, in the mornings, I usually don't cleanse at all, especially as we go into colder months. It's something I completely avoid in the morning. I usually do a splash of lukewarm water. You should always wash your face with lukewarm water, no matter what the day, time, morning, evening routine immediately followed by a hydrating toner, so something like the Claire's preparation toner, um, or even just water, keeping that skin damp. Do the rest of your routine, or go straight into using a moisturizer to help lock in all that hydration. The reason why a lot of people don't cleanse in the morning is because cleansing's drying, even if you've got these lovely pH balance cleansers. When you're putting water on your skin, it's, it's gonna potentially dry out your skin. Hot water, lukewarm water, steamy showers, all that kind of stuff is gonna take water from the skin. So if if you can avoid water altogether in the morning, it, it might help. However, in the winter, our skin can get very dry and we might start using other products to help kind of like lock in that moisture and retain that moisture. For example, um, the CeraVe um, Healing Ointment, I know is having a moment, but it's perfect for protecting your skin against transepidermal water loss when the weather is colder. The problem is with this is it lingers on the skin in a nice way, it's not too heavy, but in the morning you might want to wash away these heavy ointments, oils. I know if I keep these on my skin, I tend to break out. So sometimes in the winter you might have to cleanse. So if you do, in that case, I would just go for a one-step cleanse using your cleansing balm, something with an oil in, like an oil-based cleanser, um, anything that says milk on it, milky cleansers are a good idea as well, or cleansers that don't foam, non-stripping cleansers. Not that all foaming cleansers are stripping, but they tend to be. This way we're not doing too much water situations and you don't strip your skin or make it drier. So in the morning, I've splashed my face with water. I'm gonna take a spritzing toner, like this COSRX one, the Centella Water Alcohol-Free Toner. I'm just doing it to rehydrate the skin. And then I'm gonna take a super hydrating toner, like this one. This is, uh, what is this, Perito Centella Unscented Toner. Make sure my skin's nicely hydrated. Maybe another quick layer. Use whatever serum or serums I'm using at the time. All this is still while my skin is relatively damp from that toner still. And then moisturizer to help lock in all that hydration. And I know this video is about cleansing, but I do feel like an important part of the morning cleanse is as quickly as you can, locking in that hydration and moisture. So a lot of people will wash their face, do a few other things, pot around for a bit, and then like do their moisturizer and all that kind of stuff when really you want to do your moisturizer as quick as possible. Followed by sunscreen, of course. If this was summer, I'd be doing pretty much the same thing. In fact, I always cleanse 
in summer in the morning because the dewy look you wake up with in summer is usually just oils <laughs> from your face, sweat as well. And you want to get rid of this, especially as someone with oily skin. This will break me out if I don't cleanse this off. But again, I'll be doing the same thing. If I have to cleanse in the morning, I'll be using milks, I'll be using oils, I'll be using balms. Face wipes, micellar water, cleansing waters, I personally find too drying for my skin. As someone with oily skin, if I find them drying, my perception of them is that in general, they are overall quite drying and not something you should really use as a cleansing step on its own. So these are all products that you wouldn't use as a standalone cleanser because we all know they don't particularly cleanse that well on their own anyway. But yes, in the morning, too drying. In the evening, they're fine as like a first step cleanse, but we'll talk about that more in a second. So moving on to the evening routine, you'll notice it's still light outside. This is because I do my evening routine pretty much the moment I'm done for the day. This is usually because I like to get sunscreen off as quick as possible. But also I become very lazy in the evenings. So if I just do my skincare routine when I get in from wherever, or when I'm done for the day, it's done. I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the night. So my little bits of Velcro go back in to keep the hair out of the way. As we discussed in the morning routine, it stops any product from going onto my skin. But also I have to say like, if your hair's in your way, you're usually gonna get cleanser like left in like your hairline. And this leads to breakouts. In my personal experience, if I don't wash this away, I get a very spotty hairline. So the evening cleanse for me is all about the double cleanse. So we, we know about double cleansing. It's the idea of cleansing twice, your first step cleanse to remove waterproof products. So whether that's makeup, sunscreen, things that have been made to stay on your skin throughout the day. And then of course your second cleanse just to help cleanse your skin. Now, when it comes to a double cleanse, you can double cleanse with whatever cleanser you have. If it's a budget issue, you don't have to buy a cleansing balm, a cleansing oil, then a face wash. You can use your cleansing balm for your double cleanse. You can use a normal cleanser for your double cleanse, you know. Modern day cleansers like this have surfactants in that are good enough to help remove waterproof makeup, waterproof sunscreen, but you may find that you just have to scrub a bit harder. And that's my issue is I'd rather just use an oil cleanser because it's gentle, there's no tugging, and it just melts the product down effortlessly. With this first cleanse, really take your time massaging over the skin and making sure you're getting everywhere as well, like we said, in that hairline. Round by here, I feel like people forget to cleanse their temples a lot. Under here, by the nose, around the eyes as well. As I was saying, you can use any cleanser you want and you can just put that cleanser onto dry skin to act as like a cleansing balm or like your first cleanse. But yes, you don't have to spend a ton of money on a cleansing balm or cleansing oil. You can use a micellar water or a makeup remover as your first cleanse. However, they are not cut out to do both cleansing stages or be a cleanser on their own. But they are a good first cleanse um, at breaking down everything that you need to get off your skin. With cleansing balms and oils, I feel like this emulsifying stage where yeah. you add water, it creates this milky, not a foam, yeah, a slight milky foam. I feel like this is such an important stage of the double cleanse and cleansing in general because it really does help get rid of any residue, makeup, sunscreen, sweat, pollution, and dayness that you have on your skin. So once that's emulsified, you rinse away. The majority of cleansing balms and oils now emulsify. You may get a few more oldie fashioned ones that ask you to remove with a cloth. I personally don't mind them. I just find them a bit of a faff when you can get these emulsifying ones that rinse away super easy. Okay, and then you want to go in with your second cleansing step, whatever that may be, as long as it's not micellar water. Makeup wipes, makeup remover, face halo, makeup removing sheet, whatever they're called. You just want to use a, an actual cleanser. So again, your cleansing oil, your balm, your milky cleanser, your actual foaming cleanser, well, gentle foaming cleanser. Onto damp skin. And again, spend some good time massaging into your skin. I think the one minute, 60 second rule that a lot of estheticians talk about and preach is a very good guideline. I feel like just because it helps you remember to get everywhere on your face, all those nooks and crannies, places that you may usually miss. And yes, I would usually be doing this on my neck as well, but um, when I mentioned this before, when you film, it's not easy. It's a really difficult setup. Um, or I'd be doing this in the shower. But you can wash your face in the shower, just be very gentle, as long as your shower water isn't boiling hot and you're not sticking your face under it and it's all like attacking your face, you know, you kind of like splash it onto your face. And then you rinse away and then carry on with the rest of your routine. Again, hydrating as quick as possible, locking in moisture as soon as you can. 
Let's talk about skincare tools. Now, no skincare tool is a must have. They're all extras. Cleansing brushes, silicone brushes, makeup erasing cloths, halos, scrubs, sponges, anything, anything like that. None of those are essentials. I'm definitely not a fan of spinning brushes because they make my skin feel very sensitive and quite raw, even if I'm putting the lightest pressure or no pressure whatsoever on my face. And I honestly feel like these like cloths and things like that are just fancy makeup wipes. Like they may be getting more of that makeup off, but nothing beats just using a good oil cleanser to remove makeup and sunscreen. I feel like it's making something that's so simple, like a bigger deal than it needs to be. I do, however, love my Foreo Luna too. I don't know, I got like three of them. I got what well, a man one that's for the beard. I've got one that I've used every single day for about six months. Then I've got like a mini one as well that I take with me on weekends away and stuff like that. But I'll be talking more about my Foreo in a sponsored video. They're paying me to talk about it, so I won't talk about it now. But yeah, cleansing tools, they're not a must have. These are the best tools you can use for your face. So there we have it. I think that was quite short, but I hope that was simple and to the point. I will break down everything in the description box down below. Again, please remember that this is my very specific routine. It's what I've learned from a lot of estheticians and dermatologists and just personal experience. And at the end of the day, that's what's gonna work best for you and your skin. And it's gonna change, like I said, season to season, depending on the products you use in the evening and the morning, it's gonna change. So these are the very, very basics. Do what works best for you, play around, you know, have some fun with it. But that's it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.